In this video, I am going to show you that how we can find cross-site scripting vulnerability on live websites. Before that, if you haven't checked out my previous video in which I have shown you that how we can find SQL injection and how we can escalate it further to perform account takeovers, then I recommend you to check that out and let's get started for this video. Before that, if you are new to our channel and if you haven't checked out our website yet, which is bpractical.tech, I recommend you to check that out. We have an awesome labs for web development as well as cybersecurity, where you can practice and improve your bug bounty skills as well as web development skills. So let's get started for this video. So actually there was a cross site scripting scenario which I have founded in one of the private programs, which was pretty much very different from what I have founded in other programs. Like there was some kind of web application firewall that was protecting that application, but still I was able to uh, execute and cross site scripting. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video that how I was able to execute that XSS. So the website is now fixed. Therefore, I have created a similar replication of that particular web application by using my coding skills. So I'm going to show you that. So as you can see, here is the web application. So it was something similar to this. So don't judge because of this particular website because I have not added the web page, but instead I'm just going to show you what I did in order to find XSS. So suppose this, this is the web application. This is a live web application where we have to pop an XSS. Now to find, first of all, our goal is to find a input string that is reflecting in the web application, right? So as you can see, it is showing the type of string after a backward slash in the URL. So I'm just going to do that. So for example, I can type Batman. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Just going to head back and Batman. And as you can see, it is showing me nothing. But if I view the source code, you can see that there is a div in which our input is reflecting, right? Now that we have identified an input point, an injection point where we can pass a value and it will get reflected on the application. Now our second goal is to test dangerous characters. So if I pass a string of dangerous character like less than greater than, a single quote and a double quote, and let's see what happens. So as you can see, the web application blocked us. So right now we haven't yet provided the uh, payload, right? There is no JavaScript code in it, but still it is blocking me. So if you are testing uh, an application to something like this, then you have to change the methodology of your, uh, your uh, bug bounty hunting. Because if you provide a string of dangerous characters, there is a possibility that the web application firewall that the particular web application you're using will block you. So instead, always try to pass each dangerous character per request. So what I mean by that is instead of this greater than less than and a single quote and a double quote, you have to pass values one by one. So let's see which values are being blocked by the application. So if I type a less than, as you can see, it is reflecting as it is. So let me open a notepad over here. notepad. So we know that this is allowed, right? Now, let's see another value, so a greater than symbol. As you can see, this symbol is getting blocked, right? So this is getting blocked, right? Let's test the codes, like single code and a double code. If I type single code, as you can see, the single code is also getting blocked. Single code getting blocked, right? And let's see the double code. What about the double code? So if I type double quote, and as you can see, the double quote is getting allowed by the application. So this is allowed. Now from here, we can see that there are some characters that are allowed as well as some characters that are getting blocked when we are using it in the parameter, right? So we have to construct a payload with this uh, greater, a less than symbol, a single quote, sorry, a double quote, right? So we have to create a payload with something similar to this. And before that, let's see whether we can pass a string uh, of cross scripting, something like this. If I provide something like this, alert one, will it get blocked by the application? Let's see. 
so as you can see it is not getting blocked so we have to use all of this information to construct a payload that will eventually allow us to perform cross-site scripting right so let's see how we can do this now since we know that these two characters are allowed and we have to also note that where our uh, input is reflecting right so it is reflecting someone over here so if I copy this uh, if I copy this and I'm gonna paste it over here and instead of this alert one we have our input right input value so our value is reflecting over here and it is getting covered by the double quotes and it is inside a div tag right so we have to construct a payload to escape out of this div tag so if I talk in simple terms then we cannot uh, escape from this div tag particularly it is because once whenever I try to uh, escape from this particular div tag it will block me because the web application is not allowing us to use this particular uh, character right so but if you look closely then we can escape out of this uh, double quote right because it is com comparatively very easier for us because we can pass this double quote it will be allowed and we can pass something like this so if my input if I provide something like this in the input so something like this for yours and this so if I provide this in my input so we know that this double quote is also allowed by the application as well as this uh, less than symbol right so the reflection will be something like this div menu id equals to fayaz and it will be something like this right because this double quote will get balanced by the double quote that we are providing right so by using this method we can escape out of this menu id right now our goal is to perform cross site scripting so we can do cross site scripting by using some event handlers like we have some different event handlers in javascript like on mouse over on click uh, click on load and many others so we can use one of these event handlers to uh, execute javascript basically so if i type something like this in my inputs let's say on mouse over alert one something like this so instead of this fayas there will be on mouse over alert one right and when i hover over this particular div it should alert one in the pop-up because of this event handler payload right so by this technique we can execute cross site scripting on this type of application so let's test it so let us try to test this and see whether we can get an alert or not. So if I provide this on mouse over alert one and let's hit enter and as you can see we were successfully able to escape out of this double quotes and now let me get rid of this view source and as you can see we still are not able to execute the javascript but if i hover over here and perfect as you can see the javascript code has executed successfully which means that we were able to execute process scripting on this particular application which was uh, implementing a web application firewall so there was this scenario in a real web application where i was able to bypass this using this same technique so if you guys want to practice this uh, particular lab which I have set up then you can click on the one of the article which will be given in the description and you can download this file and test it out for yourself. Also do let me know if you find some other payloads that you can execute in this kind of scenarios in the comment section. And by the way if you haven't joined our telegram channel then the link is given in the description do join that and if you have any doubts or if you have any issues then please let me know in the comment section thanks for watching